Okay, so this is a quick little video on the Pythagorean Theorem. And you can see here we have a couple pictures. This first one over here. Whoa, wait a minute. Where'd he go? There he is. Uh, this first one over here is just a little kind of a picture of Pythagoras. And here's a little coin, a Greek coin that's got him on it. And this is one of his things it's called a magic triangle. And uh, anyways, it's just kind of a picture of Pythagoras. And Pythagoras is the one who's credited with coming up with this thing. But uh, a lot of people think that really the Greeks, or sorry, the uh, Egyptians came up with this concept. And here's why. is because uh, the pyramids. So this, you probably recognize this is one of the pyramids from Egypt. And you can see here that inside of the pyramid, if you're sort of to draw a, a line straight down from the point to the center of the pyramid and then out to the edge here, you'd see that you'd have um, this little right triangle here. And so the, uh, the Egyptians came up with this idea of figuring out, okay, how, how slanted does this slope need to be so that the uh, pyramid doesn't collapse? And actually, it's interesting that they, they have a pyramid. Um, it's called, I think it's called the Step Pyramid, or I don't know what the exact name of it is, but it, it looks like a Step Pyramid anyways, where the, uh, the pyramid in Egypt, it's kinda, it kind of goes like this. And then they're like, oh, no, we, we did it wrong. And then it kind of cur curves in like that. And so they call it the curve. It's actually more... Um, it's actually more straight up and down like this. And then they're like, oh, no, we did it wrong. And then they go like this. And then it kind of looks like this. But uh, so what happened was the Egyptians, they realized that uh, they had the angle wrong and it started to crumble. So they had to change the angle. But they got it right with this one. Anyways, uh, moving on to what the Pythagorean Theorem is. Here we go. The Pythagorean Theorem is the sum of the squares of the two legs of a right triangle. So this only works for right triangles equals the square of the hypotenuse. So that's the uh, that's the text, that's the long version of it. What does that mean? Okay, so let's uh, have a right triangle. Oh, there's one. How about that? How lucky. And next, we need uh, to talk about what these are. So it says the squares of the two legs. Okay, so what are the legs of this triangle? Well, the legs are these two lines here. And you'll notice on this triangle we have the, the 90 box, so this means that this leg is perpendicular to that leg, and so thus this angle here is 90 degrees. Okay, so the two legs are the ones that actually touch this angle, or the two rays that are the, the arms of this angle. We can call them the legs of the right triangle. The third side has a special funny name. It is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. It's very important to know which one of these is the hypotenuse, because... Um, setting up the formula correctly requires you to identify the hypotenuse, but it's very easy because if you were to make an arrow out of the 90 box, so see now I have an arrow, it actually points to the hypotenuse. It points here, right? So the arrow of the 90 box points to the hypotenuse like that. So that's how you know what the hypotenuse is. It's also the longest side of the triangle. Okay, anyways, now that we know what the legs are, the hypotenuse, here's the Pythagorean theorem. If we label the legs A and B and the hypotenuse C, then we know, and Pythagoras, uh, Pythagoras figured out that um, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So in other words, the square of the leg plus the square of the other leg, so that would be the sum adding the squares of the two legs, so we add the squares of the two legs, and that equals the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, and this ends up being a very, very useful formula for you. So you need to make sure that you write this down and memorize it, commit it to memory, and be able to know how to use it. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at this a little bit more in detail. Another way to think of that is to actually make a square on each side of the legs. And so what the Pythagorean theorem is saying is that if we were to make a square out of this leg, so we take this length and then we make a square out of that length, so this length is the same as that, and we make a square out of this side, and we make a square out of the hypotenuse. If I was to take the area of this and just kind of take all this surface area and stick it in here somewhere, and then take this surface area and stick it in here, also that these two areas would actually add up to this area. And there's actually a little demonstration on the internet about this on Wolfram. So we're going to go ahead and go to Wolfram and check this out. I just want my pointer to do this, I guess. Let's see if it'll take me to the window I've already got open. No, it's already 
up in there. So, oh, here we go. Okay, so here is the Pythagorean theorem. This little demonstration, and you can see here in yellow we have the triangle in question, and here would be the 90 degree box, and then here is our square of one side and square of the the second side and that equals the square of this and if I was to take this little slider and move it what it does is it shows how that area of this thing if we just slide that area over it actually fits there and then we slide the area of the green over it fits there now you kind of have to trust the fact that the creator of this app made this uh, area here the the pink area or whatever color this is um, actually the same so this area is actually the same so it stays constant the whole time and even while it's moving the area of this square is equal to the same area of this little space but that's the idea is in what Pythagore Pythagoras uh, figured out Pythagoras figured out is that he um, if you take that area and move it over there and this area and move it over there there they add up to the big blue one and that's true no matter what the shape of the triangle is so if I change the shape of the triangle Maybe make it a little bit uh, more um, isosceles, for example. Uh, that's still the case. You slide that piece over, and it still fits there. This piece still fits there, and it still adds up to the hypotenuse. So no matter what shape the triangle is, let's get really radical with the triangle shape and make it really weird. Okay. So then that one, uh, right? Even even on that tiny little right triangle. You can see just a tiny bit of blue over there. Slide it over. And it still fits to make the blue one. Okay, back to our slideshow. There we go. And let's do some problems with this. Okay, so first of all, the Pythagorean theorem is what? What is the Pythagorean theorem? Just write the formula there. So go ahead and pause the video and write down that formula. Hopefully you've got the formula. Remember the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared, the two legs added, equals c squared, the hypotenuse. So the square of the two legs, the sum of the square of the two legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. Go. Okay, let's do a couple uh, actual problems here. So here's one that we have uh, four inches and three inches, and we're looking for this right here. So the first step that you want to do is you want to label your sides. So I'll use some colors. Uh, you might want to use some colors as well if you have them available. So I'm going to use green. And we're going to do, let's call this A. And then we'll go to another color. And we'll call it B. And then our third color, we can do back to my orange for C. Okay. So A, B, and C. Now it's very important that you label this, especially when you're first starting to do these problems, or if you haven't done them in a long time. Um, it's very important to label them. And the C always has to be the hypotenuse. You will mess this problem up if you do not put C as your hypotenuse. It will not work. Okay, because the two legs must add to equal the C. So if the C is in the wrong place, in this, if you put the C here, for example, it's just not going to work. Um, the A and the B can actually be switched because addition is commutative. Maybe you've learned this before in algebra class. And so that means we can switch it when we add, just the same as like 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. So it doesn't matter which your A and B is. But I like to label them short, middle, longest. That's the way I like to do it, so I don't get confused. OK, so then all you have to do is write out your theorem. So I've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then you just plug in what you have here. So we have, um, let's see if I can find that color again. It was nice. Uh, let's see. So we have 4 inches for our B. And then we have, um, let's see, ink color uh, back to green. We've got uh, 3 inches for our uh, A. So 3 inches plus 4 inches equals... Uh, let's see, we'll go to orange, and I think I'm going to stop the color thing just for time. It's just taking a while to switch colors here. Oopsie, made a mistake. That's what erasers are for, right, when we make mistakes. There we go. Back to the pen. Okay, equals uh, x squared. Now, it might seem strange to put the x, but um, 
the idea is that if this is x, then I just plug it in for where, whatever I have. Okay, so now all I have to do is uh, put my squareds on, and 3 inches squared plus 4 inches squared equals x squared. So then 3 squared we know is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 9 plus 16 uh, is going to equal x squared, and 9 plus 16 is 25 equals x squared. Now it looks like we're done here because we have x on this side, but the problem is we have this squared here. So what we have to do is actually take the square root of that. And that's actually what square roots are for, in case you uh, didn't know uh, where they came from, is from this sort of problem here. So if we take the square root of both sides, whoopsie, let's see if we can erase just the square root. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Um, if we take the square root of both, let's see if we can get it over the top, of both sides, what that does is it actually removes the square from the x. So at the end, we're going to get just x, and then we know that the square root of 25 is 5. You can do that in your calculator, or if you know your perfect squares, you know that it's just 5. So 5 equals x, so we've solved this problem here for x. Okay, uh, try another one. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this one. Okay, hopefully you paused it and gave it your best shot. Let's go ahead and do this one. Now, this one here is a little bit different. We'll see that the 90 box is up here. We have our two legs. So first of all, we have to identify A, B, and C again. Now, remember that the 90 box always points at the C. Okay, so if I'm going to set up my problem, this is my C. That's my C. Also, notice that the box doesn't touch the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is special. It doesn't want to touch the box. I know. Thinks it's all important. Can't touch the box. Whatever. Okay, so... Um, we have the C is there, and then this looks like the shortest leg to me, A and B, but remember those don't really matter that much. Okay, so then let's set it up. We do our formula, and I prefer if students write the formula every time, so I'm going to be looking for that. Um, it's not because I'm a taskmaster, an evil troll. It is because the more times you write the formula, the more likely you are to remember it. So the more times you write it, the more you're going to remember. All right, okay, so we can do 7. I'm going to drop the units for this one. And Oh, I forgot to put my units on this one, didn't I? Bad Mr. Tuller. This is 5 inches. Inches up here. Okay, now we fix that. Uh, 7 squared plus, and then my B is X this time. So I'm going to put X squared here, and that equals 11. So notice on this problem here, the C was the was the x. This is this was a little bit simpler. This one here, the x ended up being my b, so I still have to put it where the b is. I can't just put it over here, because that's not going to work. Okay, so 7, interestingly, is uh, 49, 7 squared, and then plus x squared, and then 11 squared. You can use your calculator, or just know that it's 121. Okay, so then you have to do, is now that I have a uh, that there, what ends up happening is I have 49 on well, my x side, so I can't just add uh, 49 and 121 and get and take the square root. I can't do that. I have to solve this algebraically, so I need my x to be alone. So what I need to do is I need to subtract 49 on both sides. And this is kind of the part that some students have a little bit of difficulty with, is realizing that they have to do this. It's just an algebra equation, just like you did last year or whenever you took algebra, but um, you just don't recognize it because you're trying to solve a geometry problem. Okay, so 121 uh, minus 49, we get 72. So x squared equals 72. Now, we have a problem here because 72 is not a perfect square. So when we take our square root of both sides, which I'm going to do now, we have to uh, do something interesting. So we're going to get x equals, and what you can do is you can hit uh, the square root on your calculator and get 8.48. But uh, interestingly, it's also, uh, we can simplify our radical here, so uh, we can also write it like this. Let's see if this is going to work. 72 divided by 4, 18. So I think that uh, 16 might be in this. 72 divided by 
Where? There we go. Okay, so 72 actually happens to be, uh, if we bring it out over here, uh, 72 actually happens to be 36 times 2. This is called simplifying a radical, and we get 36 times 2. Well, 36 squared is 6, so the square root of 36 is 6, and then we have the 2 left over in the radical. So uh, you can also write it like that. So either way is fine. Since you guys have calculators, it's probably just best to do this. So x is 8.48 millimeters. And if you didn't understand this part here, don't worry about it. We can just You can just do this on your calculator and get this answer here. But this one is also a correct way to write it. Okay. Very good. Okay, make sure that you go back over this if you uh, had, had some difficulty and didn't understand. And uh, that's it. We're going to do some of these in class.